Well, here we are. Second time around. It's been about, what, a month or so since we've done this? Three, four weeks. It's been a whole fast. A whole fast. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we, we, yeah. Just finished. we did this table talk. We don't really know what we're calling it yet. Yeah. At the beginning of the Is fast. Is still table talks? Right beforehand. They could be called anything. We haven't discovered it. We don't, we don't know yet. That's yeah. the fun of it. Drop it in the comments. What should we call it? <laughs> what should we call it? <laughs> No, seriously, please yeah. do. <laughs> we need help. Yeah. We totally do. We're figuring this out. But uh, it was a good Sunday. I don't know about you guys. I thought it was a great Sunday. Pastor yep. Eric was back. Pastor Eric was back. Yep. Everyone was excited about Starting that. Starting off the church I see. Yep. The mission. Shared about the mission. To see our cities transformed by the power of the gospel for the glory of God in our generation. Let's go. And uh, kicking it off. And... I think it was important, too, that I don't know if anybody caught this, is we kind of changed our wordage a little bit from in this series introducing the mission yeah. to being seeing our cities transformed yeah. by the power of the gospel for the glory of God in our generation. It used to be the hope of the church was to see the city of Jacksonville. So like we even changed our hope right. to a mission and we're not just gonna be hopeful about it, but rather it's gonna be a mission we we're push towards. Yeah, we're gonna do and it. it's not just some Jacksonville, yeah. it's it's this whole surrounding area, the cities it's, transformed as well. It, so. it's really the, the heart behind that too is uh, of course Jacksonville Orange Park, but any city that God in the future gives us influence. Yeah. Because as we uh, really go after him and his presence um, just changes everything in our lives, I believe wholeheartedly. We've, we've heard prophetic words and stuff that people can come from all over to experience mm-hmm. the power of God. And, uh, man, when I hear that, man, I want to partner with that. I want to pray through it. I want to see it happen. Yeah, and, yeah absolutely. Uh, so... That's part of the heart of behind changing it to cities as well, not just Jacksonville uh, and Orange Park or wherever else. Who knows where God sends, right? Yeah. I mean, Bishop's in Guyana. He's yeah, that's true. So the mission stays the same. Let's go and stay yeah. the same. So <clears throat> it's not just Jacksonville. So I mean, specifics. What does it look like for us? What does our cities look like transformed? Hmm. Um, I know we do a lot of dreaming around here. Right. I think it's almost like getting the cart before the horse sometimes when we try to just do it out of, uh, and I want to do this a lot in my life, just doing it out of grunt work, just oh, making dude. it happen, striving, doing it on our own. To see our tra- cities transform, it's really partnering with the Holy Spirit yeah. to accomplish uh, the mission that God's given us, realizing that it's Him that brings the increase and it's not us striving and trying to make it happen yeah. but just resting in him and allowing him to to use us uh the great commission go all the world preach the gospel baptize in the name of the father son the holy spirit uh but jesus told his disciples first you must go and wait i'm going to send a helper i'm going to send the holy spirit to be with you you need to first go wait and then you're going to fulfill what, what Jesus told the Great Commission going all the world preach the gospel, right? Yeah, That's how yeah. we're going to do it effectively. So what happened in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came. Uh, all the believers there were uh, marked forever. Everything was changed. Paul preached the message uh, right after that. 3,000 people came to the faith. Yeah. And the early church was really birthed. And that's what we really need to be looking at is what does the early church uh, look like? And that should be our model um, of how the church should operate. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, I think um, Pastor Eric kind of highlighted talking about it. He talked about his our mission, right? Yeah. To live in God's presence. Yeah. Out of an overflow, go after the lost, hurting, downtrodden, poor, the up and outers. Yeah. And that's what our life should be about. Yeah. So it encompasses everything in my life. And we should really have an urgency behind it. Yeah. To do that, I mean, I really do fully believe that we're we're in the last days right yeah. now, uh, and we should sense. Uh, the calling of God's people to really step out, to not allow fear to keep us back from sharing the gospel, uh, from allowing fear in this next COVID variant. I heard this past week there's another COVID variant apparently yeah. coming oh, out geez. on Tuesday. Season, I'm just yeah, like, just we're going to hear about that yeah. for who knows how long. I mean, yeah. I mean, come on. Like, well, we can't allow fear. We can't allow the fear of man, the fear of a COVID variant what uh, the government might say to keep us back from sharing the gospel into doing God's work. It doesn't matter uh, how we feel uh, in our emotions inside. We get beyond that and we just, we do it, right? For sure, for sure. I think we were talking about it earlier, like 
there's something that kind of hinders people from actually stepping out. Yeah. Yeah, I think oftentimes it's like it's the pride or like, and I think that's interesting about pride is we sometimes have this false idea of pride is it just being uh, pride is like someone that's boastful about themselves. Yeah. It's someone that's <clears throat> very confident about themselves, and we think right. that's what a prideful person is. But really, pride is anytime you put too much attention on yourself. And so a prideful person is also, in my opinion, a shy person. It's a person that's timid to share the faith. It's a person oh, that's, that's timid to, to tell their neighbor about the gospel because you're too prideful about what someone will think about you in return. And yeah, we think right. of it as like, oh, I'm just shy. It's like, no, you're you're focused on your you in that situation and not the individual. There's a pride there. And I For think sure. pride in, in our lives, I mean, it's like you go through scripture and, and really look at it. It's like one of the biggest downfalls is God attests the, 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 uh, the prideful, right? right? And he goes towards the humble. And so um, I think when we recognize that we have pride built up in so many areas, it's what's hindering us from allowing the gospel to be spread into these areas. It's allowing us, uh, it, it's, it's, it's hindering our ability to to see our city transformed, like I said, like to see our city transformed, like how it was in the book of Acts. It's, right. it's, it's us living that life and communion with each other about yeah. being in the presence, about being surrounded and drawing other people into the gospel to be set free of things. And I think it's clear when we look at society today that the church isn't being the church. Like it's, right. we're moving backwards. The, the church is declining right. as a whole. Society is getting worse as a whole. Yeah. And it comes down to this is that the church isn't living out the commission that we're, 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 we're too caught up in ourselves or right. too caught up in our yeah. own yeah, fears sure. or too caught up in our own pride to see anything take place. And, um, I heard a stat, um, two weeks ago that, uh, 51% of people of Christians have returned to church since COVID hit. <coughs> Out of that 51%, so only 51%. So, if the church was a thousand people before, now the church is what a four ninety yeah. or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, good math. Yeah, <laughs> boom, <laughs> real quick. So out of that, <laughs> out of that four ninety though, uh, of them, one in six come to church uh, every. So <coughs> every six weeks, they only come one time. Yeah, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, I mean, how, so 49% yeah. of that, they only attend one time out of six weeks. Yeah. I got to see that because being a kid's pastor, like I tracked kids' attendance for so long yeah. that like I would recognize like when I was, when I was tracking the kids' ministry, like really only in your percentage was one in six. Uh, the one that I saw was probably pretty similar. It's like when I looked at kids that would come every week to church, it was really like 20 to 40% of the kids would attend church right. weekly. The rest was like once a month once a quarter, every other, maybe every three weeks. And so there wasn't a priority to be involved in the community. And I think, again, that creates an issue because they're, you're off living the life that you want to live and never really connecting and fulfilling kind of the, the commitment we've made to the church to spread the gospel, to be in this community, to be encouraged with one another. So One aspect of it, too, is if we really believe that God is who he says he is, uh, if Jesus really died on the cross, Yeah really rose again and that he is our eternal salvation like if we really believe that how cruel would it be of us yeah not to share it with our neighbors yeah, not sure. to share it with the people we do life with on a regular basis i mean there's probably a co-worker or someone else that you do life with on a regular basis but we don't really ever reach out and get beyond those walls when we talked about earlier yeah. pride uh to share yeah. the gospel it, it is it a is it something to where we are we really that cruel or we really don't believe it? Which one is it? Yeah. I, honestly, I think it, it goes back to comfort. Like, we, we take advantage of the fact that we're good, yeah. you know, and, and you don't think about it. And, um, but if you put yourself on the other side, if that was you, if your neighbor was you, and you had the life-saving gift, you yeah. wouldn't want that, yeah. you know? Um, but I, it's so easy in this culture to just kind of exist. Yeah. And Especially if you don't have to. And the simplicity of the greatest commandment of all, we, we hear it all the time, but then we don't really walk it out. Yeah, it's so it's simple. Love the Lord your God, there are heart, soul, mind, and strength, and yeah. love who? Yeah. Your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And we, we hold on to that, and we go, we have good theology. We have good understanding of God. Yeah, it makes we, sense. We comfort ourselves and feel like, I know this scripture. I know this is how I'm supposed to live. Yeah. But we don't ever do it, and so what good is that knowledge? What good is that theology? In my mind, the the purest form of theology is going out and doing it. It's it's it's, yeah. it's practicing what you're speaking. It's practicing what you say you believe in. It's it's being a doer of the word, right? James talks about that rather than being just hearers, but being doers of the word. And yeah. and I had that actually the scripture written down because I think it's 
it's so funny that it says it this way in James 1 20 says he says be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself um, I think it's funny because oftentimes we, we we line up Satan as the deceiver he's the one that deceives believers he's the one that deceives us and gets us <laughs> But here he says, you can deceive yourself by God. believing what you're saying like, and, and taking the word in and, and, and saying, I believe the theology, I believe the goodness of the gospel, I believe yeah. what it is, but never doing anything with it. He's like, you've deceived yourself. You're not, you're not really living it. You're not really believing it. You're not really walking in it. Uh, and it's just, I think so many believers walk in deception of their faith, the deception of, of who they actually are because they're not doing anything about it. Yeah, and they've been, they've been, it really boils down to they've been lied to. They're believing the lies of the enemy. Yeah. And I kind of go, uh, just kind of popped in my head, uh, goes back to even Adam and Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm. They walked with God in the cool of the new day. They knew fellowship, relationship with God. And Satan whispered in their ear and said, hey, why don't you eat of the tree of good of knowledge of good and evil? They ate of the tree. And what did they do right after that? Out of pride, out of sin, they were shameful and they hid from the presence of God. They yeah. hid from that relationship they knew so well and they walked away from it. And we're Christians are just hiding away from the presence of God yeah. and then hiding, away, hiding out, uh, not even sharing the gospel with people. And it's time for the kingdom of God, the people of God, to come out of hiding. For yeah, sure. it's true. Yeah, for sure. And everyone has a circle of influence. Like, we all have families. We're all in different neighborhoods, yeah. different communities. You know, um, I think people shy away from it too because they don't know what it looks like. You know, in the simplest forms, it could be showing love or just showing compassion to the person next to you. Yeah. Um, or sharing a meal with somebody. You know. No, that's good. I think everyone feels like they. You might need to go preach or teach and stuff like that. And yeah. If you're not called to do something, you're you're not gonna like it. Right. right. It should be enjoyable. For right. You. Everyone has a specific gift. No, I think that's a good point to make too. That sharing the gospel isn't have to sit on the street corner with a megaphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, turn or burn. Like yeah. it's it's relationships. It's like sure. uh, going back to that thought. It's the Book of Acts. It's it's inviting people into your home, yeah. loving on them, caring for them. And and I know I've like and, and we've kind of shared this as staff. Like sometimes we get so caught up in in kind of um, the idea of of helping people and, and bringing people that we don't actually bridge it to loving people like we don't actually yeah. make that connection to like no I'm called to do life with you I'm called to love you I'm called to right. to, to to share my life with you versus just you're not just a project to me you're not just yeah. someone I'm trying to share the gospel with to check off the mark like like I love you and I want to see you receive the love of Christ like like that's the commandment right like to to, to walk in it, the golden rule, like treat others the way you want to be treated, yeah. to reflect on on the love that you've received from Christ, and then in the turn give it away. Like, and we'll talk more about that as we kind of get into some of our values. But like, we're these we encounter the Lord in all these ways, and we're not meant to hold it to ourselves, but we're meant to give it away to others. We're meant to help other people experience God's goodness. Yeah, sure, it's infectious. Yeah, you know, if, if your circle of influence sees what you have, they want to know. I mean, that's perfect opportunity for evangelism. You know. It's simple. It doesn't have to be. I think we kind of uh, we, we we make it harder than it actually is. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. And sometimes it, you're allowed an opportunity to come in and to speak in someone's life of relationship. Yeah. A lot of times, it's built off relationship first, or meeting someone's like basic needs. Basic yeah. needs. You know, and um, I believe the Lord's going to allow us opportunity to really meet the physical needs of our community mm -hmm. in a greater way than we've ever really seen before uh, through partnering with other ministries which Journey's always done but even stuff like having a food drive food bank kind of thing right? yeah, and, yeah. Um, we're looking into that and seeing what that looks like for us and when we can uh, kind of roll that aspect of it out of that type of ministry but that I pray that will open the door as we begin to do that open the door to to minister and share the gospel with other people because it really is meeting their uh physical need and their spiritual need as well um, that's what I think is powerful about mission trips too is you're, you go and you're uh, and you're sharing the gospel with them but you're meeting their physical needs a lot of times so like yeah. when I went to Guyana recently or uh, Nicaragua been to Haiti those mission yeah. trips that I went on uh, we met their physical needs first and they were able to minister to them out of that um, that need that was met yep, like for sure. a really powerful thing and I think that's like for us leaders here we're always dreaming and praying for more opportunities for other people to come on board like food pantry there's yeah. tons of people who would love to serve in that yeah you know and so for 
I guess for other people who are like, ah, there's there's nothing really for me to serve or be a part of. That could be it. Yeah. Uh, mission trips is another one. Yep. I know we want to do it for youth specifically and, yep. and yep. get the rest of the church, but uh, there's always opportunities out there to partner with Bishop and going to see yeah. John as well and what he's doing and even bring an adult trip at some point end of this year or early next year or some point to go to go out and it could be really open our eyes to allow us to be more effective in a lot of ways. So mm-hmm. yeah. I think it's good. I think like even Pastor Eric shared this weekend that it's such a simple concept, but yeah. we've made it so difficult in the sense that like, there's really like, there's not this crazy <laughs> strategy. There isn't these hoops you have to jump. It's just literally like, if you want to see our cities transformed, it's us going out and doing it. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, I love our our mission statement it says in our generation. Like we're yeah. not waiting. Like right now. We're not waiting for God to do something. Right. Like we're not just sitting around saying, I hope excited. our like cities changed, and yeah. I, I I hope the school systems allow God back into it sometime. I hope the political arena that God's invited into it at some point. It's not these hopes. It's it's we have a mission to do and go and be a part of sure. it. And so right. I think that's encouraging every that that we hold on to that in our generation because it's. If it's going to happen in our generation, it's us as the body that has to do something now to see it take place. Yep, yep. yep. I, I think it, the transformation part is, is a twofold process, right? You got, we talked about it, you have to, as an individual, be transformed by God's presence yep. in order to affect a community. Um, so some people might find themselves in that individual transformation, like they don't know what a God encounter is. And I know we're going to talk about it this yep. coming Sunday. Um, but when they grasp that aspect, I think it's so easier. You said it in staff prayer this this past Tuesday, man. When you have those encounters with God, you want it so much. Like yeah. out of that abundance of His presence, you live a life of righteousness. Everything becomes well simple. Sin doesn't taste good anymore. Yes, yeah, sin doesn't yeah. taste good. Right. I mean, and when you're in His presence, and I try to talk about this at the beginning of the year with hunger. Yeah. Was uh, the difference between physical hunger, spiritual hunger, physical hunger you get hungry by by uh, not eating, yeah. but in the kingdom of God you get hungry by by eating yeah. and that's such a like difference, that. you know So that's good. the more you eat, the more you spend time with the Lord we're going to talk about that even more this Sunday, again, but in a different way than we have as we share the vision yeah. of the church and no, I'm excited about the, series. the vision really no, kind of backs up the vision backs up our mission yeah. And, yeah. and that's how we're accomplishing our mission to see our like cities that. transformed by the power of the gospel for the glory of God in our generation yeah. is uh, through the vision that we're putting into place and we're yeah. talking about. And you're helping roll out the vision this week. And as yep. a church, we really haven't had uh, this vision statement. It's it's really a way that we've lived, but we're kind of combining now this mission and vision idea and how they go together. So yep. it's going to be a good weekend of kind of unpacking that vision a little bit. There's a lot of things going on this yeah, weekend sure. from, from small group fairs so Let's go. kicking small off groups. and talking about getting in community and being in groups and yep. you know making an impact in our city I mean it starts in your home it starts in being in those communities and to yep. be built up in those moments so if you haven't joined a group or you've never been in a group before find this guy let's go, let's go. Sunday. Uh, groups First are kicking trips. off it's going to be good and we're really just going to launch into this this next season just going at it and life's uh, so much better in community yeah and uh, man you need to find your people and find a place to really belong to you and to yeah. encourage one another and disciple one relationships another relationships is huge man yeah, relationships like it's it's so needed for sure for sure and it's a huge sunday we have a we'll have a free gift too well, let's go as well anticipation hey. so you don't want to miss that free gift that everyone will get and uh it'll be a good sunday yeah i'm looking forward to it at least some surprises in the hallways some 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 visuals yep. so yeah it's a good week it's, it's gonna fun be, week it's to roll gonna out be a really big sunday yeah. for sure yeah, it is a big sunday no don't one miss, miss it. it yeah don't for sure it. yeah so uh, I don't know what we're calling this, guys. Uh, hopefully everyone comments what you want to call this, but um, we're just looking for a big weekend. Yep, yeah, for sure. We'll see you all Sunday. Yep.